Hi guys! Do you want to install Clipper on your 3D printer but you don't have a Raspberry Pi board? Well, MakerBase has this small board which is very similar with the Raspberry Pi 3B and can easily run Clipper. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, from a certain point in time, we have seen an increase of users wanting to use Clipper firmware on their 3D printers. In most cases, to use Clipper firmware, you need to install it on an external board such as a Raspberry Pi microcomputer, since it's more powerful than the printer's main board. This way, the computing power of the Raspberry Pi board will handle all the hard work with the calculations and such, while the printer's main board will just be the interface between Clipper and the printer's components. This has been a great solution so far, However, lately it has been very hard to find and buy Raspberry Pi boards, due to stock shortage. Some 3D printer board manufacturers are aware of this and release to the market their own solution for Clipper. MakerBase is one of them, with the MKS Pi board. This board is equipped with a powerful 4-core 64-bit chip and a 1GB DDR3 memory. It has the same size as the Raspberry Pi 3B board, and most of the same connectors at the same location. It has the USB Type-C connector and HDMI connector down here on this side, and at the right is the Ethernet connector and a couple of USB 2.0 connectors and one USB 3.0 connector. There is also a micro SD card slot at the bottom as well. The USB Type-C, which is used to power the board on the Raspberry Pi, on the MakerBase board is only for debugging purposes. To power the MakerBase board, we need to supply 12 or 24 volts at this connector here. Next to it are some other pins. The lower ones can be used to connect an accelerometer sensor and use it for the input shape feature. Down here is a small header pin for EUART communication. As for display outputs, the board has the traditional HDMI connector and this small connector at the left to connect a small touch SPI display. MakerBase also has this display available when ordering the board. The display is a 3.5 inch touch display and connects to the board with a flat cable. Finally, next to the SPI connector, there's a small reset button. One thing this board does not have is Wi-Fi, so MakerBase has the option to get this small USB Wi-Fi adapter together with the board if needed. They also have this small heatsink as option to cool down the main chip, which we strongly recommend to install. To connect the board and install Clipper is very simple. First, we need to connect the USB cable from the board to the printer and the Wi-Fi adapter if you have one. To connect the display, first connect the flat cable at the back of the display. Carefully open the connector lock, insert the flat cable with the exposed pins facing down and close the lock. On the board side, carefully lift the small connector lock Insert the flat cable with the exposed pins facing the edge of the board and then lower the lock. If you want to use an ADX-L345 accelerometer sensor for a clipper, you can connect it here and with this wiring sequence. Next is the power connector. You need to get a 2-pin JST female connector and wire the positive to the left pin and ground to the right pin and then supply 12 or 24 volts. Before turning the power on, we need to get the operating system for the board first. MakerBase has an almost ready to run clipper image 
based on the ARM Bion desktop system and that already supports Clipper screen for their board. All we need to do is to go to their page and download the image. Next, we use one of the many programs available to transfer the image to the micro SD card. The memory card needs to be 8 GB or higher. We can use the free Bellina software to flash the card with the operating system. Ok, so open Bellina software, load the image from MakerBase, select the SD card and start. Once that is done, we need to configure the board's Wi-Fi. To do that, access the memory card and search for this file. Open it with Notepad++ Editor and change your country code and type in your SSID and Wi-Fi password. Ok, save the file, remove the card from your computer and insert it in the board's memory card slot. We can now turn the power on. And a few seconds later, the display should light up with a screen similar to this. You can also access the board on your computer. To do that, you first need to know which IP the board is locked to. So, on the display, go to Menu, then Network, and the IP address will be written here. If you type in the IP address on your browser, you should see the Fluid interface. However, it is not yet capable of connecting with the printer. And that's why you see the error on the screen. For the printer side, we also need to install a dedicated firmware on the main board. The firmware will vary according to the printer you have, so download and install PuTTY and access the board using the IP. It will request a username and password, so type in MKS for user and MakerBase for the password. If you type in this command, it will tell us what is connected to the USB port. In our case, is the SKR Mini E3 with the STM32F103 microcontroller. Next, we enter the Clipper folder by typing this command. And next, we type make space menu config. Here, we need to define all the options we need and that match our board inside the printer so that it can build the firmware for the printer. As we mentioned, this will vary according to the board you have on your printer. At the end, save the file. The firmware is not built yet, so we need to type make and enter, and now it will start building it. The firmware will be named clipper.bin if you have a 32-bit board, or clipper.hex if you have an 8-bit board. The last line will show you where the firmware file is located. Also, depending on the main board, you can flash the firmware on your main board from here, or copy this file to a memory card and flash the printer from the memory card. To copy the file from the MKS Pi board, you need to use WinSCP software. Create a new session using the MKS board's IP and the same username and password. Next, enter the Clipper folder then out and transfer the file to your memory card. Don't forget to rename the file to firmware.bin before removing the memory card. Insert the memory card in your printer's card slot and turn the printer on. The printer's screen will become blank and will stay blank. Don't worry, it's normal. There is one more thing we need to set up, which is the printer configuration file. Most Clipper settings are obtained by a printer configuration file that is stored on the memory card of the MKS Pi board. These settings are also different according to the printer and main board you have. There is a page with many config file examples you can use to start with. The printer config file needs to be placed inside the Clipper config folder. This is what a printer config file looks like. If you want to add the accelerometer sensor, add these lines at the bottom. Ok, we are almost there. We still need to tell Clipper which is the USB ID it needs to use to communicate with the printer's main board. So, start PuTTY again, enter the user and password again, 
and then enter the command we have shown a few minutes back. Copy the entire line and paste it in the printer config file, replacing the original line that was already there. OK, done. Save the file and copy it to the MKS Pi board inside the Clipper config folder. If there's already a file there, replace that one with the new one. Restart the MKS board and now you should be able to start Clipper and control the printer from the computer browser. The operating system image is already equipped with the necessary streamers and has the USB camera feature enabled. So if you want to connect an external USB camera, you can plug it in on one of the USB ports. The image is also equipped with the necessary accelerometer calculation library, which means you only need to configure the sensor and test it. And that's it you guys, hope this video was useful, we will see you guys next time. Bye!